Hi, welcome to my channel. I hope you'll stick around with me today and paint these sunflowers and geraniums in a glass jar. Today I'm using my size 6 cat tongue brush by Uku, my size 10 intuition round brush, and my size 12 filbert by Royal and Langnickel. I also used a size 6 round just for a few details on two sets of leaves. I'm using my Sonnet and Siamy Art watercolors, and I have two jars of water one for rinsing my dirty brushes, and one for painting. And finally, I'm also using my 9x12 300 GSM watercolor paper by B Paper Company. Let's get started. Okay, so to start off today, I think I want to start with my sunflowers. And, um, and the reason I want to do that rather than starting with my jar is because I actually want some of the leaves to be in front of the jar today. So I want to prepare some of my yellow deep and quite a bit of it because I know I'll use it today for this I'm using my size 6 cat tongue it is a it's a really nice brush for petals and I kind of want to confine my vase to about this I don't know this size maybe Okay, and I want lots of petals. Okay, so far so good. I like to just uh, make these petal shapes and I, I used to find that I would be very perfect with them and I found that the more that I painted the more I began to discover that the flowers I was happiest with having painted were those that had been done kind of in a hurry or less than perfect just kind of you know messy um, this is just me but you know I started letting that kind of inform how I how I try to do my florals so I just try to keep them nice and loose and you know even messy even messy This one down here, I want it to be um, kind of hanging over. Okay, so far so good. This one is quite wet, so I'm using my brush after I've kind of uh, unloaded some of the pigment to just soak some of that up. And so what I like to do, and this palette is really good for this. This is actually a serving dish, um, but it has all this texture in it. It makes it really easy to, to just kind of drag that pigment off. Okay, maybe I'll do one more just kind of peeking out here. Okay, I like it. Rinse that all off and then I think I'll let that dry a bit before going into my next layer. Now when I dry my brushes, I like to um, dry them and usually I use, if, I, if I'm kind of done with them for a bit, I use a cloth that I keep in my lap to um, blot them dry. And I just like to do that because I know that the water that I blot out of there is not going to stay in those um, bristles and uh, keep my feral saturated. That's this part. I'm contributing to 
rust or looseness or any of that stuff. So, um, so I like to do that and uh, just kind of dry it a bit extra and put it off to the side. Okay, so I want to go ahead and just get some lazy leaves in here. Just kind of, uh, just kind of randomly. I like to just kind of squiggle those. Leaving that little bit of white, leave something that can be interpreted as um, highlight or some, you know, different lighter coloration in, in the leaf. And I'm just getting a few of these in here and then I will go in and do my um, geraniums next. Love doing these leaves. They're just fun. And you can go from every direction. You can go out the leaf, you can go back. Just whatever you like. Okay, so I want to start on these geraniums. And for these, I'm using my dark red. Just a little more of a yellow red than my um, cherry. Cherry has a bit more blue in it. It's a cooler red. But I just want to put in some, some slashes, little easy petal-like marks right there. And then I'm going to drag off this pigment because I don't want to waste it. See, you know, we end up able to salvage a bit of that. And then good rinse. And then going back just with water on the brush, just making some easy um, petal shapes or just really, you know, brush marks, brush strokes into these marks. Now, I, um, I like to kind of change the angle of my brush and my approach. I try not to do these all exactly the same. And you'll notice I'm, I'm still, I'm working them all without really, um, without necessarily going and re-wetting my brush. And you have choices. You can re-wet your brush. I just kind of like that I still retain a little pigment. And so it, um, I have a little more of, you know, that pink tone, I guess. And so then just places where I notice that it hasn't done a lot of um, bleeding and, you know, maybe here and there in between. I don't want to completely obscure all of the white inside there. Whoa, that one was big. <laughs> okay. And I just didn't want this quite so rounded. I like a little... Um, I just like for that to vary a little bit. I feel like geraniums can be, um, you know, they can they can be a little more fun than that. They're not always just round, round, round. So, you know, sometimes they have these funny little offshoots. And okay, get this in there. I just love that process of watching those kind of bleed and. Uh, Let's see. Maybe kind of starting out over here, I think I'm going to need more of that pigment. And I try not to do too many of these at a time. I, I want to be, um, I want to be able to go in while they're still wet because I, I feel like they bleed a bit better that way. And the only thing I really am kind of regretting at this point is that I really did mean to create this a bit just smaller in the sense that I wanted some more things going off the sides here. And I'm taking up all this room with my florals, but I, I wanted some sideways, side leaning or side growing, spreading leaves. And, uh, you know, like multi-leaf things. So 
it is what it is. Okay, I like it. Just adding a little more here and there. Okay, want one more of these geranium flowers just right up here. These are so fun. And then again, just, you know, just having fun with this process of touching in. Not being perfectionist about any of it, because I, I really do, I like the process. I want to just, you know, enjoy the process and kind of, kind of see what happens. That part is really so much fun with watercolor, and there are so many techniques for just being able to do that, being able to, to free yourself up to just let things happen. And I'm just dropping some water in here and there where I see, you know, maybe I didn't get quite the bleeds I wanted, but I'm happy. And you can always go back if you see a bleed that's kind of bothering you, you can just kind of push that pigment. So yeah, lots of fun. Okay, I want to go ahead and make some of these geranium leaves. To do that, I'm using my olive green again. We'll need a good amount of it. And I'd like this to have a deep value, so I'm not adding too much water to my brush. Because I like these to be kind of dark. But then I just go with a very imperfect squiggle. Just, you know, like that. You can add more less as you go. I'll do one more of these, maybe just right here. Imperfect is the key for these. Really, just don't overthink it. Let them be a little jagged, doesn't hurt anything. And then I'm going to go into my yellow deep with a nicely wet, juicy brush plenty of water in this and go from the white part just into that green and go ahead and kind of spread it in there a bit. And I'm doing that. I want it to, to have this effect of, um, of creating that burning kind of look. I'm sure there's an actual term for it, but I tend to think of it as kind of a burning because the, the pigment, the yellow pigment with the water kind of pushes at the green pigment and it does it kind of in a in a ferning kind of shape and I just think that's neat okay and just just to add to the the depth of this a little bit I'm going back with a little bit of green just like those greens to be a bit darker for these geranium leaves just on those you know just on the edges and then just adding some little just some little details in there where not details really but just uh, some of that green where you know there might be some leaves kind of peeking out behind and then I need some up here with these geraniums and so I'll do one right here Maybe one, hmm, let's see, I need to hurry. I don't want my, just let it peek out just like that. I don't want that green to dry too much. I want to be able to get this yellow in there. Okay, a little more green on that up here. I like it. A little bit of this yellow right there. A 
Okay. I like that. So far, so good. Now, I do wish I had maybe made this arrangement a little smaller. It's going to really overwhelm my glass jar. But what I'm going to do is make the jar here and then come up into this spot there. But I really, you know, ordinarily I like to have the, the threads and all of that kind of visible. And I just really hogged up space with all these flowers. So they're going to be the focus. And then what I'm going to do is just let, let them overwhelm the jar. I am starting this jar with my ocean, uh, actually indigo, sorry. And I want to start right here, just kind of just behind this leaf. And I want to be careful just because it's still quite wet right there. And I did get a bit of pigment from that green. It just kind of bled over and I am not worried about that at all, y'all. Not even. Okay. Is this going to be the most perfectly sided jar? It's not. And is that okay? It is. Because I'm going to tell y'all a secret. This jar would not even exist if I had not painted it. It's true. So I just think uh, it's, uh, it's all okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just blending this in. I'm using a mix of, you know, the pigment that's already on my jar. And then, I mean, on the, <laughs> the pigment that's already on my brush. And the um, water. And I, I feel certain I'm not going to be unhappy about that bleed up there from the from the leaf. Now I like this um, deep uh, shadow over here and I even, I don't even mind that it's, uh, it has kind of a harsh line there. I feel like that's actually okay. So just a little, a little more up here. And then I want more pigment up under these leaves and up in there just because it would be darker, wouldn't it? There's maybe some shadow shading. Okay. And then one more thing, just while this is still having some, some moisture just from, you know, having just made it, I'm going to go ahead and put some stems in here. because I'd like for these to, uh, to bleed a bit in, in this pigment, uh, in the water. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. It's hard to talk <laughs> and think and paint. <laughs> okay. Some of those really dark, some of those really light. That suits me. I'm going to get some of this purple in here too because I will have a set of purple leaves. So I'm using my dark purple, dark schmark. It's never very dark. I'll just get some of those in there. I like it. Kind of want to go ahead and put some of these stems up here just while I have purple on my brush. So I'm just doing this so that I don't waste this pigment. Can't have that. Okay, I like it. I'm just dragging that excess pigment off as much as I can. I get asked all the time about this palette and I wish I could direct you to it. I purchased this several years ago at Home Goods and um, it, you know, I look every now and then when I'm there, I, you know, I try to check for one and I never see them. It is a beautiful Italian porcelain and I paid 
I'm going to get the, the cents wrong, but something 375 or 395, something ridiculous, not even joking. Okay, I'm making something here that's kind of like eucalyptus-ish. And to do that, I'm just making different, um, just using my brush at different angles and, you know, not, um, not the same at all and uh, not trying to have anything, oh, too matchy-matchy or anything like that. I'm, the only thing I really care about in, in doing that is that my values work. So I would rather, and I kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do this, but I'd rather have cohesive kind of values. And then as I have things that are, that are there and in place, um, assuming I have enough pigment there, I can go in with my clean brush that's just, you know, a bit wet and brush some more so that, you know, this look that I have down here with my geraniums this you know loose bleeding kind of look i also have in in these and so that's you know that way i have different tones in that and i just like that look that is a more difficult look for me to achieve in my sunflowers i have done it but i tend to use a different style for those but i like this it just it also seems to add a bit of depth it's just so easy you know you're just you're just going in and brushing water and then just kind of makes it a bit more magical okay i have another kind of leaf i want to do and i'm making kind of a a green and i like to use my tree green for this and i'll tell you why because i don't want to use up my olive <laughs> because I can't really stand this tree green. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I am not a fan. I'm sure there are applications for it, but I just always like my olive green. And so here's what I do. I take a good amount of tree green and then um, either burnt sienna or burnt umber, usually burnt umber, take this and mix it in, which gives me, you know, kind of a warmed up green. and uh, kind of a, a green brown and then if this doesn't quite do it I can I can also add a little dark brown but I did really use a lot of pigment in that so I wasn't kidding when I said a lot of tree green okay I'm gonna take a bit more of this burn umber and this should do it now I usually do these these leaves kind of light so I'm kind of trying to clear a spot where I can just use a bit more water on my brush okay and so here I just want to create these stems and some easy leaves now I have a little bit of uh, lint or something just showed up on my on that first leaf and I'm not gonna panic however I am gonna try to remember to get that Sometimes if I don't get it immediately, I won't see it later, which is why my house is not always very tidy. <laughs> because sometimes that stuff becomes invisible. Okay, get a little bit darker and kind of overlap this one. Okay, and I just wanted that stem to get a little uh, thicker there. Just adding a couple of these leaves here, like they're kind of peeking out from behind the sunflower. Okay, and then let's go up here. Well, that's a bit darker, isn't it? Let's uh, dab that. 
and there we go. Now we have a similar value to what we have down here. We can attribute that to a bit too much pigment or maybe not as much water in that. Okay, a little more pigment to overlap. And again, this is kind of peeking out from behind that sunflower in my in my mind. So just down there. And then I think what I'll do is um there's a little bit I want to remove off the sunflower petal itself. And so I've just rinsed my brush with clean water and I'm just kind of scrubbing at that very gently. But it just it just took care of that. And it may not be perfect, but y'all, that's okay. It really is. Okay, one more of these just kind of coming out from that. And just have fun with these. Don't worry about them all being the same. It's nice if there's kind of a cohesive look, but but really just enjoy it and just know that, you know, ultimately, ultimately it works out even if there are imperfections in it. Okay, now I'm adding a little bit of shadow on the undersides of these stems, just using this same uh, brown green, but just for a little bit of depth in this and then also just without being too picky adding some veins in these now I don't always add veins in my leaves but I always like it when I do in these I feel like it's very suited and I'm just always happy with it Okay, going up the underside again. And you know, how, whatever makes sense to you with these, you can make these as detailed as you like. I just prefer, I don't know if it's for the sake of simplicity or I think it has more to do with just keeping things to some degree, a slightly bit more abstract type of you know, feel just loose and, but, but that's why I don't do them all. I love this. Do you think I could put a couple of these, uh, brown stems? And honestly, I kind of want to do one more set of these, not to fill this up too much, but just because I think it would be good to have one more set right here. These are kind of light, but that kind of makes sense. They're kind of peeking out back there and that's all right. Hmm. Kind of makes me think maybe I could do one more light set down here. And now I'm going to be really honest. If I had thought about this here, I might not would have done that, but I feel like it works. It's this lighter value. It's almost like, you know, background fill. So I, I do think it works without being too matchy-matchy. Okay, I like it. Okay, now I need to go in and do another layer on these sunflowers. And I'm going back to my petal brush for this. 
and I will use my gold ochre for this. I just want something that has, uh, you know, a bit more to it, even warmer, even darker. And it can be kind of a challenge to get the right balance because it's going over these, but, um, so that was a nice little test. Let me see that I still needed a bit more pigment. And so what I like to do is just layer in more of these um, petals, just, you know, another layer on these sunflowers. And I like to peek some out from behind. Okay. Yeah, I like it. That's going to add a nice, just a nice little bit of, you know, more depth, a little more interest. And I, I try to not think too much about, you know, getting one petal or, you know, making them, just making things too perfect. I, I want layers and layers and um, and I just, you know, I want balance in my, in my piece, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want it to be too expected or just laid out too perfectly. So that's kind of, that's my goal here. One of them. So fun. I love these. And just kind of uh, changing the angle of what these petals are doing so that it, it isn't just, um, oh, it's not just a rows, rows and rows of perfect and perfectly laid out petals. So that's kind of, you know, that's kind of the thing I'm going for there. And I am, I'm going to mess with something really quick. Now, I don't like to get overly, you know, worried or perfectionist, but I'm going to kind of remove part of this petal. And all I did was uh, take my brush and I rinsed it and I kind of dabbed it. But I like that better. It kind of kind of made that almost a sheer layer there. Okay, these are gonna be super fun. And, you know, these can be overdone, and you don't want to do that, but, you know, also have fun with it. I am uh, I have some pigment left on this brush, and so I'm just using it to add some more of these layers, and I like it. Okay, I want to add some little veins on this, these little leaves here. And so I just want to go ahead and get another brush for that. Ordinarily, I don't. I would just be using my size 10. But um, those are, you know, they're just a little uh, more delicate looking. And so I'm doing them, these a little, just a little bit softer. I made really sure to uh, use a good amount of water in this, in the pigment on my brush so that it would, um, they would stay very faint. Okay. 
bit of a shadow on the stem. Just at the underside. And listen, you can probably see that I was a bit shaky on several of those. I, it's really funny because um, some of the things I have painted that I've liked the most have been the things that I've been the shakiest on, whether it was because I was doing them live or, or whatnot. But it's really funny. I feel like I get more of that abstract look that I, you know, I love when I'm um, shaky. It's just funny. Okay, getting some of this brown in here. Okay, I may uh, just kind of blend that a little. I didn't love that. I don't know, probably only bothers me. But let's just blend that. Now it may do weird stuff, you know, but that's okay. There, okay, love it, that's so fun. So I'm gonna go back to my size 10 round and I, I want to do a little more, so I want to add something that will create a little more depth in my leaves. And so I'm just preparing some of this olive pigment and I'm going to go on my leaves, but just put some of these veins in. nice and loose okay and I'll let those kind of dry I'm going to go ahead and get some stems in here. I didn't leave a lot of room for stems and that's okay. I really, I don't love it if I have a real leggy looking um, arrangement. I tend to like it better if, uh, if there is just lots of floral interest and so that's just me. You can do it however you like. Okay, and then, and I'll come back and do some little things in there, but I want to also um, put some little V's in these, just here and there where these geraniums are. And it's because, you know, they grow in these like multi, uh, multi flower clusters. And, uh, and so this is really fun because you put these in, but to kind of retain some of that look that that I aim for, that uh, loose, almost impressionist, um, abstract, I mean to say, uh, what I like to do is put some of those little marks in, and then with just, you know, not a ton of water on my brush, but just a bit, I like to go in and just touch those here and there just like we did for the, the petals themselves. I just feel like it helps that look be kind of cohesive and, uh, and it just softens up these little stem bits that are in here. And then you can use that residue just here and there, inside there. That'll give you another like light value and you don't have to put it in every, you know, every little spot. And in fact, you know, you probably don't want to. I just like how it softens that up. And then one more up here. I like
like to make these in bees because I feel like, you know, that that suits the idea that they're, they're, you know, these clusters. So then just touching those. And then taking your residue just touching a few places okay and then I just like to go in with a real light wash of my oh goodness I just realized I see one more of these sunflower leaves that I didn't put veins on <laughs> Just didn't even see you there, little guy. Truthfully, I don't know what I'm doing half the time with any of those veins, so, you know, if it looks ridiculous, well, that's me not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> I think that's all right. I like how much, how thick these other veins are, and so I'd like to kind of, you know, in an effort to stay with that, just make that a bit thicker. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I, I honestly kind of want to do that one over. I think it has too many, uh, it's got too many legs, too many veins. This is what happens when Patricia overthinks it. Okay, and then maybe I can go in. Oh, I'm going in with just uh, a little bit of a damp brush, and then I'm just kind of brushing that. I just feel like it looks too... Uh, it's too Halloween. It's too many fingers, too spidery something. But there we go. I like that better. I do. Yeah. That's not perfect and that's okay. Okay. And then I'll just go in with some of this. Really, I like the, uh, the green I used for, um, these, you know, extra leaves. And I'm just going to go in with some brush strokes, just kind of uh, adding some things here and there, just little strokes, not, uh, you know, not worrying about everything making sense or um, connecting. I'm just kind of filling some of the places that I feel like are just maybe a little too, too wide in there because there would be a little more shadow. And I'm happy with that. Happy with how that looks. Okay. And uh, there would be... Um, there would be one last thing. Well, two, actually. So real quick, I want to go ahead and do my shadow. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do the centers to these sunflowers. And then I'm going to remember and to come back and do this shadow, but I'm going to do these sunflower centers because they're so satisfying. And uh, I want to mention, I've got some water on my ferrule, and I just like to address that by taking my cloth and just kind of spinning my cloth with just the ferrule touching it. I do not like the prospect of um, having a bunch of my water come down this brown pigment on my brush and flood my flower. So I like to be really careful of that, especially when I'm when I'm doing the centers of these uh, sunflowers. So I want to leave a bit of just kind of, you know, a highlight area there. I like that you can see the yellow and the white in that. I feel like that um, makes sense to me. So just like it. I'd like to make this kind of an oval and I just dot, just dot that pigment around there. And 
and I tend to dot in circles because I feel like, you know, sunflower seeds kind of grow in this, uh, not, you know, not a circle, but I like to go around and around when I'm making this. And so I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I'm using my dark brown. And I like to also kind of turn my brush as I'm doing these. I like to make sure I don't have a static brush pattern on my, uh, that's, that's kind of transferring to my paper because of holding my brush a certain way. And, uh, I just, I like to do that. It's something I have kind of found works well for me. Okay. Do not let these rule your life. Just, just do it. Enjoy it. Now this bottom one really kind of won't have much of a highlight because it's, it's hanging down and there's a bit more shadow down there. Okay, one last one. No, two. For some reason, a lot of times I do four of these, even though I really prefer odd numbers. It's just funny. Okay, spin this brush. And remember where that highlight's going to be. I feel like I could fill some of these in just a little more. Like I'm really, I'm extra happy with that one. The fact that it has, it's just a little darker in some of those areas. So again, not letting any of this rule my life, but just kind of adjusting that. Yeah, I like it. Okay, last one. Gosh, these are so fun. Okay, I love that. All right, you've got a good rinse. That dark brown is, it sticks around. Kind of wish I had just a little more room beneath this jar, but it's okay. We're going to make this a kind of a faint shadow. So I'm just going in with clean water right up against the bottom of this jar and then just up around the side, just a tiny bit. And I'm using a, just a light wash of this indigo, the same color that I used for the jar. And then I'm just going to blend that just a little. I'd like the predominant amount of pigment to be up at the jar, like right underneath it. So just adding a little more pigment up in that. Okay, I wanna do one more thing. Just have a bit of detail in the bottom of this jar. And so I'm getting just a little more of my indigo. And I just want to create this curve This is kind of an oval at the bottom. Okay, I like it. And then with a little bit lighter value, so just rinsing some of that off, you can make some more, um, just some more little, uh, these might be, I don't know, not really reflections, but something. <laughs> okay, and I'm just adding just some shadow. 
and I'm completely okay with it being streaky because glass yeah I like that very much okay and I think I would call that done for me and uh, maybe even hang it on a wall. I think that's super cute, really fun. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you will paint this or let me know if you have painted it. Uh, thanks so much, so much for tuning in today. As always, happy painting.